I'll be tying an iris caddis today. This will be a tan size 14. It's a really effective fly for emerging caddis in the evening. And besides tan, I also like it in an amber color. It's been really effective. For the hook, I'll be using a Daiichi 1182, size 14. I've crimped down the barb, put it in the vise and get ready to go. My thread is a Rusty Dunn, it's a uni thread ADOT. I like to start right behind the eye of the hook and I'll make touching turns about a quarter of the way down. I like to start there to attach the tail. I've used caddis gold, some crinkled Zelon, but I also use, actually I've been running out of the gold color, so I'm using caddis amber today, but I think you can notice that they're very similar in color, so I don't know that it would make a lot of difference. Comes out of the package crinkled like this. I twist it to make it stay together. I'll trim off the ends just to make them even and make a soft wrap two wraps and then pull down and I'll go back towards the eye to bind them down, bind down the ends. I'll make some wraps going back to the bend of the hook, or excuse me, the barb of the hook and take two or three wraps just so that it, the thread will not bounce forward. My dimension here is I'm just going to have it about a half of the body length. For the body of the fly, in the past I've used some Zelon dubbing, Hydropsyche tan. It's been really effective. It's a short fiber with some Zelon in it. But the other dubbing material I've been using as of late is just some hairs here. And after I finish this, this fly, I'll tie another one, but also provide a little bit of additional information on how and where to find the hairs here dubbing, how I prepare it. So I'm just going to attach some dubbing and I just squeeze and go clockwise a little bit at a time. And this is short fiber material much different than much of the, a lot of the superfine that I use for my dry flies. I'll start to wind it around. I'll hold the tail, make a couple of wraps, and then make sure that I'm back over the barb. The problem I've had in the past is that I cheat a little bit and the body ends up a little bit shorter. And you can use your rotating vise. I'm going a lot slower than normal. And I'll go back to create a chunky, stubby body. Use a little bit more. These are caddis are much different than a mayfly body. Mayfly body are quite slim, and a caddis are th a thick body. So I'll make it a little bit bigger towards the front. And you notice I've left some room here, about a third of the of the shank. For the wing. I'll be using some crinkled Zelon in white. 
pull some out, trim it off. And this is where a lot of the problems that a friend of mine has as he's tying these. I'll trim this even. So I'll take these fibers and I'm making a loop here. I'll grab those, the ends, put them together. And I want my wing to be back about at the bend of the hook. But you'll notice that the fibers are all pretty much on top of each other. And you can certainly tie your wings like that. But what I like to do is layer them so they're in the back, they're a little bit longer than they are in the front. And in order to accomplish that, I'll take my thumb and forefinger and just press forward with my thumb. And you'll notice now that it's a little bit layered. It isn't quite as um, uniform on top. So now I'll just make sure that my length is the correct the correct uh, dimension that I want and make two, three, four, five wraps. And I want you to notice that I tied it in quite a ways back of the eye. And I do that intentionally so that as I come in and trim these fibers, that it, they don't extend, the butt ends don't extend over the eye of the hook. You'll have a few of these uh, fibers on the Zilon wing and you can just trim them off just like the, some of the extra fibers here from the hare's ear. And now I'm using some hare's ear that is darker than the body. And I'll show you, as I mentioned, where I get that. And I'll dub some more on. Use a little bit of moisture. Squeeze and twist one direction. A little bit at a time. If you get too much dubbing on at one time, it won't attach effectively to the, the thread. Now, in order to keep the wing in the same place, I put my thumb on top of it and I'll start at the front and then start moving it back up onto the wing and then take crisscross wraps and then you'll notice I'm finished and it, it popped out a little bit, but just take another wrap and that will bind those down, pull them back and put your thread at the front. You'll see a few extra long fibers here and I'll just trim some of those. I don't want to trim them really close to the head, but I'll get it away from the eye of the hook so that I can create a nice whip finish and not get any fibers trapped. Straighten my thread, take a five turn whip finish, and I'll take three more wraps for a second whip finish. Touch my scissors to the thread and pull, and we're finished. So these are quite easy to tie once you get your technique down and they don't take a lot of time. So let me tie another one and we'll go over the materials a little bit more. So again, I'll take my thread, start behind the eye. And this is where I want my tail. This is also about the the proportion of where my wing will attach. And that's why I put my tail on right at that point. So if it's a little bit thicker there, 
And I just keep rotating it so that the fibers come together. Trim the end, make a soft wrap to pull it down away from the eye. Take a couple of wraps forward to bind down the butt ends. And now I'll start to go back with a little bit of open loops as opposed to touching turns. And I'm right over the top of the barb right now and I'll take a couple of extra wraps. So as I move this, it doesn't move the thread forward and reposition it so it isn't exactly where I want it. Again, I'll take about a half of the length of the shank. And now let's look at some hair's mask. So here's a hair's mask. And you can tell in this area, I've cut some out already. And it's different colors. So what I do is trim all of these off and here's a hair's mask that you can see that I've cut all of that off. And as you cut those fibers, I end up using a coffee grinder. And you put it in there and you whirl it a couple of times and it creates a really nice dubbing. It mixes the shorter fibers with the longer fibers. And in order to get the lighter color, I'll use a lot of this area in here. And then if I want the darker, I'll take some of this as well as up in the ears. And these are darker areas. These are also shorter fibers. And so when they mix with the little bit longer fibers in here, it makes it somewhat easier to dub. But that's how I end up getting two distinct colors. So this one is lighter and the darker color over here. Let me get my dubbing now. I'll attach it the same way. We're doing a little bit at a time. And you can go back over it to make it a little bit thicker, but I'm just applying it a sparse amount each time. That's about as much as I use. And then as I start to wrap, you'll notice I'm in front of the tail. So I'll start moving backwards towards the tail and make a wrap and then use my rotary function. And what it ends up looking like in full speed when I'm tying is this. Just going back and forth in order to create a chunky, well-proportioned body. And it's okay not to have enough dubbing on the first time. I like to, man I want to make sure I manage it effectively. And these spiky fibers are okay, but I'm just going to trim them a little bit, but you'll still still see some spike. Again, as we prepare our wing, I just fold that forward and grab a hold of it. And you'll see that it's it's loose a little bit, but let me the most the biggest problem people have are 
trying to loosen that up. So let me find a tight section here. So there you can, you'll notice that it's a perfectly round circle or oblong, I guess. And I'll grab a hold of it and push with my thumb and re reposition and then grab it again, push with my thumb, open up my thumb and forefinger on the other hand. And you can see that in the back here, the fibers are longer than in the front. And the reason that's important again is as you're fishing it, the water will start to compress that to some extent. And having those fibers layered will make them last a lot longer. The proportion again is right, I'm tying it right at the bend of the hook. I'll hold it, I've got my thread well back from the eye. Take a soft wrap, then the second one tighten down, three, four, five. And if it starts to position or start to rotate forward, you can move it back with your thumb and forefinger. Now I'll pull these up and you'll see that by positioning the thread back here in the tie-in point, when you trim it, you'll have you'll end up having a nice wing and you won't have any butt ends over the eye. Make sure that wing is going to position. Those are separate white fibers and I think that will be fine. Now we'll take our dark hair's ear and applying it to the thread here. As I start to wind back, I'll hold the wing in place, starting at the eye and then moving back And now I'll take a couple of X turns, one right at the back, a couple more X, and then take my thread through and end right at the eye of the hook. And now I'll take my whip finisher, a five turn whip finish and another three turn to finish the fly. And that's how I tie my iris caddis. Again, I'm tying this in a 14, but most of the time I fish it in a size 16. Really effective for the hydropsyche hatch. I've enjoy fishing it on the Madison River. And besides this iris caddis in tan, the X caddis in tan, both are my two top caddis fly imitations. So I'll attach a link to the fly pattern sheet on my Riverkeeper Fly website below. And if you liked the video, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel.